Enfys Nest was a human female rebel who was introduced in the movie Solo A Star Wars Story as an enemy and later ally of Han Solo. In this video I intend to explain just who she was. Hello and welcome to Vault Holocron, I'm Jonathan and today we will be discussing Enfys Nest. Enfys Nest was born in 27 BBY into a family whose women for generations had fought to protect the galaxy. Enfys Nest's mother was the leader of the Cloud Riders, a group which fought against criminal organisations and later the Empire. This fight was quite personal for Enfys Nest, as her homeworld had been brutalised by the actions of the five crime syndicates. By the way, the five syndicates refers to Crimson Dawn, Black Sun, the Crimora Syndicate, the Hut Clan, the Pike Syndicate, and Sontul Pride. When Enfys Nest was only 16 years old, her mother sadly died, and due to this, Nest took up the role of leader of the Cloud Riders. She also inherited her mother's mask and armour, which hid her identity and her age. Now she wouldn't so easily be underestimated due to her age. Around a year into being leader, Enfys Nest and six marauders raided an Imperial spice cache on Gargon. The raid involved the group riding on swoop bikes and stealing medicinally processed spice, but not any raw spice, which was also there. Enfys Nest was successful and the team escaped the Empire. Later, Enfys Nest found she was in need of blank identity chips. But, instead of stealing them herself, she tricked Tobias Beckett into stealing some for her. She did this by sending Beckett a transmission, pretending to be Dryden Voss. Beckett stole some identity chips from the Pantoran criminal, Devorad on Hoven 4, and brought them to the space station, Muntont Dow, on board the Rampart, where he expected to meet Dryden Voss. However, as he left his ship, the Rampart, he was ambushed by Enfys Nest and the Cloud Riders. Beckett tried to fight them off, shooting at them and sending a speeder towards them, but he was knocked down by Enfys Nest. Beckett threatens that Rhea and Val would use their ship's guns to kill Enfys Nest and the Cloud Riders, but Rhea and Val had already been caught and were brought before Enfys Nest. Enfys Nest revealed that she had sent Beckett for the chips, as if he failed, she'd lose competition, and if he succeeded, she'd get the blank identity chips she needed. However, Beckett remotely blew up his ship leaving Nest without her chips, and creating the perfect opportunity to escape his enemy's clutches. Beckett wanted to kill Enfys Nest here, but Val pulled him away, so that they could successfully escape. Enfys Nest had failed. After this, Enfys Nest continued to be an issue for Tobias Beckett, and this conflict can be seen in the Solo movie. In that movie, Beckett, Val, Rio, Han, and Chewie went to Vandor to steal a 20T rail crawler conveyor transport train car which contained 400 kilograms of coaxium. However, Enfys Nest and the Cloud Riders intervened, attempting to take the coaxium which Beckett and crew had worked so hard to detach for herself. In the fighting, the Cloud Rider, Baruch Polk, killed Rio Durant, and some of the other Cloud Riders attached their own tow cables to the train car. Both groups attempted to tow the train car for themselves, but the train car was caught between them. Together the groups flew towards a mountain, hoping that the other would detach the train car. They ended up getting too close to the mountain though, and both groups had to detach in order to survive. The Caraxium blew up, but Enfys Nest got away safely. Later, one of the Cloud Riders placed a homing beacon 
onto the Millennium Falcon. Beckett and a small crew then flew to Kessel and stole unrefined coaxium for Crimson Dawn. They took this coaxium to Savarine to be refined and while here, Emphis Nest and the Cloud Riders intervened. Beckett was outgunned and so didn't fight back. Emphis Nest then unmasked herself and told Beckett and crew that the Cloud Riders were freedom fighters, not marauders. Han Solo decided to help Emphis Nest by tricking Crimson Dawn. The plan was for Crimson Dawn to believe that they had been delivered fake coaxium while having actually been given the real thing. Meanwhile, the Cloud Riders would have swapped outfits with the locals in order to trick Crimson Dawn into holding the locals at gunpoint. Once it was revealed that the real coaxium was with Crimson Dawn, the Cloud Riders revealed themselves and defeated the Crimson Dawn guards. From here, Beckett ran off with the coaxium. Solo and Kira killed Dryden Voss, and Solo killed Beckett, taking back the coaxium for the Cloud Riders. Emphis Nest took almost all of the coaxium, which was very valuable, and gave Solo one vial. She offered that Han join her, but he turned this down. After this, Emphis Nest and the Cloud Riders met with Saw Gerrera to give him the coaxium for his partisan movement. Nest had requested that Saw Gerrera come alone for the coaxium, but when Gerrera arrived, there were noises of another person coming from the ship. The Cloud Riders prepared to fight, but soon found out that this person was 11-year-old Jin Erso. Emphis Nest related to Jin, and could tell that Jin hadn't had the easiest upbringing, and so she chose to unmask herself, although this was against custom. Nest offered Jin the advice that people would underestimate her, and so she should make them regret it. Next, Saw Gerrera and Emphis Nest boarded Saw's ship to negotiate the deal with the coaxium. As they entered, Jin told Nest that Saw would underestimate her, which impressed Nest. Anyway, that's all we know about Emphis Nest so far. I hope you enjoyed this video. And we hope to see you later at Vault Holocron.